Does your office sound like this? I sure hope not, but if it does, we're going to show you exactly how to fix it. I'm Graham with Music City Acoustics, and just a couple days ago, that was my office. It was way too loud, echoey, and distracting in here. Plus, I'm pretty sure everybody that I talked to on the phone thought I was in the bathroom. Not exactly a great look for somebody running a business. Let's jump right in, and I'll show you how we took my office from that reverb chamber to a comfortable and productive place for me to work. Clearly from that opening shot, it sounded terrible in here. But to figure out how many acoustic panels are needed to make it sound better, we first have to take a look at the work I'll be doing in here. My work days vary a ton. I answer phone calls and emails, talk to customers and our team. I have remote Zoom consultations with customers from all over the place. I record guest appearances on podcasts. I record videos just like this. And I do pretty much everything else involved with running Music City Acoustics right from here. Making a list of the work that you're gonna be doing in your office or your space will help you identify how many acoustic panels you're gonna to need to treat your space. If you're not recording video and podcasts like I am, you can probably get away with a lot less panels. But knowing that I'll be doing a lot of video and audio recording and listening back to music, I decided to go with our high mid panels. It's two and a half inches deep and works a little bit lower into the frequency spectrum. But for most offices, if you're just talking on the phone and having meetings, our low profile panel, it's only an inch and a half deep, works perfectly. Revamping my office gave us the perfect opportunity to make this video showing you how to improve the sound in your office space. First, I cleared everything out of here and painted the room, which is desperately needed. And then from there, I could figure out what the new layout of the office was gonna be and figure out where to put acoustic panels. To figure out the layout of the space and where my desk was gonna go and the furniture and the acoustic panels, I drew up my office in SketchUp. But you can totally do this for your space just on a piece of paper, on a napkin, whatever you have laying around. So looking at the layout of my room in SketchUp, I was able to figure out how many acoustic panels I could fit in here, where they were gonna go, and how I could make sure that the space was not only gonna sound great, but it was also gonna look great too. So starting with the back wall behind me, we installed these three four by one foot panels. I went with the four by ones here because there's this light switch that's pretty strangely placed right behind where I sit at the desk. The thinner panels allowed for access to that light switch and also made a great looking backdrop for the video shoots that we do in here. So from there, I utilized that large open wall to my right. I put three of the four by two foot high mid panels on it and we centered that first one and then spaced the other two just one foot apart from that. So it's super easy to install. And when you walk in the space, the dark color of those panels makes an awesome visual statement. The wall directly across from me has a big window centered on it. So on each side of that window, we put one four by two foot high mid panel. That really helps so that when I'm talking or if I'm recording a podcast or recording video, that if I'm projecting outwards, the sound that's hitting that wall isn't bouncing back towards me. To finish off the space, we installed two flush mount ceiling panels on either side of the ceiling light. Now in most offices, you can get away with only treating the ceiling or only treating the walls. But because I do a lot of video and audio recording in here and I have a lot of Zoom calls, I wanted to make sure that everything sounded great. We went that extra mile to make sure there's a very dry, controlled and clear sounding space. So you might be wondering how we knew how many acoustic panels to put in here or how you can figure out how many acoustic panels you're gonna need for your space. We'd love to help you out with your space. So feel free to fill out our free room advice form on our website and we can get back to you with a plan tailored specifically to you and how you're using your office. So let me show you one of the tools that we use to figure out how to treat spaces in addition to all the experience we have from working in a ton of different rooms. 10log.com is a free online tool that lets you calculate the reverb time of a space. RT60 or reverb time is a measurement that indicates how long it takes for sound to decay in a room. Longer reverb times correlate to lower speech intelligibility, distracting environments, and noisier spaces. For office spaces, we normally wanna see that reverb time fall somewhere between three quarters of a second and half a second. And if that office is being used to record video and audio like mine is a lot, then we wanna see that reverb time be even shorter. All right, so I entered my room dimensions, the wall materials, the floor, the ceiling materials, and the doors and the windows, and now we can start to see what will happen if we introduce acoustic panels to the space. So the RT60 in my room untreated started around 1.4 seconds, way higher than that target area that we had mentioned. With just the chairs, 
we can start to see it come down a little bit, but not nearly as much as we need it to to get it into a great space to record audio and video. So as we add in the wall panels, we can start to see that reverb time drop super fast. With each addition of another panel, the reverb time is gonna get shorter and shorter. So lastly, let's throw in those ceiling panels so we can see what difference that will make. Amazing. So that brings the reverb time down to about 0.4 seconds, which tells me that this will be a great productive space for me to work and to also record audio and video and make sure that everybody can understand me and that everything sounds good. We can't be an acoustics company with bad sounding audio after all. Ooh, it's terrible. So you might be thinking, my office sounds fine, but how do I prevent the sound of my kids playing from getting into my office? Or how do I keep the barking dog next door out of my call? Acoustic panels aren't gonna help prevent sound from getting into your space, but they can help mitigate the effects of that sound once it's in your office by reducing the reverb time and limiting how many surfaces they're bouncing off of. So to stop sounds from getting in or out of your office, usually the best approach is to look for the biggest sound leaks. Those are gonna be things like your doors and your windows. Hey mailman. For windows, there's a few things that you can do. There's some companies that make window plugs that basically add another pane of glass to your window so you can still see out the window, but drastically reduce the amount of sound that's coming through. If you have older windows in your home that let in a lot of sound, something like that can be really helpful. Another option, but definitely more expensive, is just replacing your window with a better performing double pane window that has a much higher STC rating or sound transmission class rating so it lets in less sound. A slightly more drastic approach, but if you don't look out that window often or don't need the natural light from it, you can cover it up with a heavy dense sheet of plywood or MDF and make sure that it seals all the way around with weather stripping so there's no air or light that can get in. That will make sure that there's no sound leaking through and that will help make a big difference. Doors are one of the biggest sound leaks inside a house or inside office spaces. When it comes to doors, the most important thing is having the right type of door. Typically in houses, doors are hollow core doors and they're not very good at preventing sound from getting through them. The best practice by far is to replace that hollow core door with something heavier and more solid. Take a look at your door and see if there's any light getting through it along the perimeter of it. If light can get through, sound can get through and all it takes is a tiny little crack or a ton of sound to rush through that space. Then you can start to address the perimeter of the door and making sure that it's sealed really well from top to bottom. Like I said, usually the biggest air gap that you find around doors is on the bottom. So an automatic door bottom or a threshold that makes physical contact with the bottom of your door is gonna be the best way to make sure that that seals nice and airtight. So when you shut the door, you're keeping sound out. From there, it's pretty easy to address any gaps between the door and the door frame. Uh, you know, vertically on the sides or on the top with weather stripping. And if you wanna take it even a step further, you can get something like a, a door seal kit. And those are metal frames with rubber gaskets and they go all the way around the door. And that makes sure when you shut your door, that automatic bottom seals and those rubber gaskets are making physical contact with the door frame so that no air can travel freely through the door. And that will really help keep out a ton of sound. Once you have the doors and windows fixed, you should be hearing way less of your neighbor's dogs barking. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us. We'll see you in the next one.